Kobe and the Mysterious Museum Part 1. Kobe Goes to the Museum Once upon a time, there was a boy named Kobe who lived in Erebonia with his parents. One day, his parents took him to the magnificent Imperial Museum, which contained the Empire's turbulent history. However, Kobe was too young to understand and thought the museum was an old, boring place with old, boring exhibits. His mother gave him a warning. There are many people inside the museum, so don't let go of my hand, okay? Kids and their families who become lost inside the museum will be devoured by demons. But Kobe didn't listen to his mother's words. Yeah, whatever, he muttered under his breath. Several minutes later, Kobe grew bored with the museum and wanted to go exploring. While his parents were distracted by an exhibit, Kobe let go of his mother's hand and wandered around the museum. He waded through the sluggish crowd and ended up in an open room. There was a large mural on display with a winged dragon and powerful beasts. Kobe was moved by these mythical creatures, but soon felt disappointed upon realizing that they couldn't possibly exist in real life. There was an old painting hanging next to the mural. It had lots of small, sealed caskets painted in a variety of sharp, vibrant colors. Kobe stared at this painting and soon felt uneasy. One of the caskets in the painting had its lid ajar, and the paint on the casket was peeling. Kobe wasn't sure what the painting meant, but he was drawn to it nonetheless. He continued to stare at the painting until someone spoke to him from behind. You like this painting? Kobe whirled around. There was a girl slightly older than him, standing there with a warm smile. The girl continued without waiting for Kobe's answer. Museums are so quiet and only have old stuff lying around, which is boring. But I really like this painting. Kobe was drawn to the girl for having the same thoughts as him. I feel the same way. And look how this casket is open here. It's like the color just popped out of it. The girl's face brightened and she took Kobe's hand. We really get each other. I found something else cool. Want to come see it with me? Kobe's face also brightened at having a companion and he agreed to go with her. The two walked around the museum together, exploring the different rooms and exhibits. Kobe loved what the girl showed him, and he completely forgot how bored he had been with his parents. I've been stuck in a hospital up until now, the girl admitted. I'm really glad I can explore the museum with you, she added, blushing. Thanks. I like being with you way more than being with my parents, Kobe confessed. The girl looked concerned, and asked him where his parents were. I left them at some exhibit, Kobe said, shrugging. I got bored being with them. The girl nodded. I see. They finally finished exploring the museum. Wait, the girl said. I want to show you something super special before you go. Kobe didn't question the girl's words, and she took him by the hand again. The museum crowd began thinning out, and the pair soon found themselves in an empty room, there was an ancient door before them. Kobe felt as if the door was staring ominously at him. It's past here, but the door's too heavy for me to open, the girl said. But that's why you're here. You're a strong boy, aren't you? She ushered Kobe closer to the door. You can open it. Kobe placed a hand on the door's handle as the girl kept encouraging him to open the door. Part 2. Kobe Encounters the Unknown Kobe tried opening the door, but it didn't budge. Huh. Strange. Annoyed, he started pushing and pulling the door with all his might. Finally, the heavy door swung open with a loud groan. A cold gust howled at the pair, and they saw a dark stairwell leading underground. There's something super rare down here. Come on! The girl took Kobe's hand once more and started leading him down the stairwell. But Kobe stopped her. Wait, aren't we going to get lost going down here? We don't know where this leads, and it could be dangerous. Although Kobe had lots of fun exploring the museum with the girl, he was hesitant about exploring underground. The girl looked at him, puzzled. Are you scared? I thought you were brave and strong. Her face fell, and she hung her head. This was all that was needed for Kobe's pride to get the better of him. Huh? N no way! I... Just thought you might be scared. Yeah. The girl's face brightened. Oh, really? Aw, that's so nice of you. 
She smiled and led him down the stairwell again. The two continued walking down the dark stairwell, with the girl leading Kobe. We're almost there, she said. Her grip on Kobe's hand was starting to get stronger with every step. Kobe lost track of how long they'd been descending the stairwell, and suddenly, the girl stopped. We're here. Kobe stared around. They appeared to be in a room that looked exactly like the painting with caskets he'd seen earlier when he first met the girl. There were several caskets lined up, with only one with its lid ajar. A cold air in the room filled the space with tension, but Kobe had completely forgotten about his hesitancy. He was extremely moved to see the same painting in real life. Wow, it's just like the stuff in the painting, he exclaimed joyfully, his words reverberating around the room. The girl smiled maliciously. You know, she said quietly, they call this place the catacombs, a place where no one can hear you and no one will rescue you. Kobe whirled around at the girl's disturbing words. Suddenly, the girl's sweet, saccharine face began distorting and turned into a black shadow with red glowing eyes. Her soft hand also turned into a shadow and began crushing Kobe's hand. Ah! Kobe screamed. He desperately tried to free himself from the shadow's grip, but she was too strong, and he started shaking with terror at the situation. The shadow laughed with malice, traces of the girl's voice still present. There's no need to scream. Everyone's already awake thanks to you. Suddenly, the caskets began rattling, and more black shadows began to emerge from them. Kobe froze, paralyzed with pure horror, his mind blank as he stared all around him. Kobe suddenly remembered what his mother had told him. There are many people inside the museum, so don't let go of my hand, okay? Kids and their families who become lost inside the museum will be devoured by demons. Her words were coming back to haunt him. She was telling the truth. He hung his head, feeling remorseful, and the black shadows started to advance on him. If only I'd listened. I'm sorry, Mom. Kobe accepted his fate as the shadows opened their mouths and converged on him. Part 3 Kobe learns his lesson. Suddenly, there's a loud rumbling from deep within the catacombs, and an enormous dust cloud as tall as the ceiling made its way toward Kobe. Instinctively, Kobe covered his eyes with his free hand as the small specks of sand within the cloud pelted him. The cloud soon vanished, and Kobe lowered his hand. Though his vision was obstructed by the dust, he was able to barely make out a giant silhouette in front of him. It cannot be! Shocked, the black shadow holding Kobe's hand loosened its grip. Kobe didn't waste another second. He darted out from the circle the black shadows had formed around him, but a gravelly voice soon stopped him. Do not move, boy. Kobe involuntarily straightened up and stopped as he had been commanded. The voice spoke once more. Gentle spirits, controlled by evil, I now grant you passage back to Adios. Then, beads of light surged toward Kobe and the shadows. The latter screamed in agony as the beads of light struck them, causing them to vanish. <coughs> A familiar voice screamed. Kobe turned. The shadow that had gripped his hand was engulfed in the light, and the girl reemerged as the screaming faded. Kobe and the girl stared at each other, silence falling between them. Finally, the girl spoke tears streaming down her face. I'm sorry I tricked you, but I want you to know that I had fun exploring the museum with you. I was happy we were almost friends. That part was real. The beads of light bounced off the catacomb walls and shone on the pair, and the girl began to fade away in the light. Kobe rushed toward her and grabbed her hand. I believe you, he exclaimed. Because of you, I was able to enjoy the museum for the first time. I'm glad I met you. And we're already friends, right? You can't just stand here and let a friend cry. He kept pouring his heart out to the girl, but she continued to fade away. She initially looked surprised at his words, but soon gave him the same warm smile she had given him when they had first met. 
<laughs> Thank you. You're right. I can't cry. Now that we're finally friends. Kobe's face fell. He could no longer feel the girl's hand in his. Don't worry, the girl continued, still smiling. I know we'll meet again, someday. She vanished into the light, and Kobe stared at the spot where she had vanished, his vision blurred by his tears. Eventually, the light faded away, and a familiar voice spoke, bringing Kobe back to his senses. It appears as if you've made a good friend. The dust cloud containing the giant silhouette cleared, and Kobe could now clearly see its identity. Ah, uh, a dragon! Kobe said, stunned. It was indeed a magnificent dragon with brilliant wings. The dragon spoke again, its voice reverberating around the catacombs. You were very nearly consumed by evil spirits. Only those who do not listen to their parents will be led astray. Sound familiar, boy? Kobe's elation at meeting a dragon subsided as a shiver ran down his spine. Yes, he admitted, feeling guilty. Mom told me to stay close, but I didn't listen. The dragon stared at him with a piercing gaze. You do know what you did wrong, do you not, boy? Kobe nodded silently. There is a rumor that exists in this museum, the dragon continued. When children break their promises with their parents, they shall all be consumed by demons. You were attacked, boy, but what about your parents? Kobe froze in horror at the dragon's words. No, not mom and dad too. Please save them. He begged, but the dragon dropped its gaze and shook its head. Your parents were genuinely worried about you the same way you worry about them now. But you brought this upon yourself, boy. Your mistakes cannot be taken back. Kobe felt remorse for the first time in his life. He felt awful for being a nuisance to his parents and not listening to them. He fell to his knees, tears streaming down his face. The dragon stared at the crying boy for a moment. However, you can shape the future with your actions. You understand what will happen if you commit the same mistakes. Kobe wiped his face and nodded. The dragon moved closer to him. Kobe could see his reflection in the dragon's piercing eyes. He suddenly felt as if he was being sucked into the dragon's eyes, and he began to lose his balance. Make choices your friend would be proud of, he thought he heard the dragon say. Kobe came around and attempted to sit up, but he felt something wrapped around his legs. Don't move, it's too dangerous, a worried voice said. He looked around. His mother was staring at him while his father was carrying him. His eyes widened. Mom, Dad, you're okay, Kobe cried out. Where's the black shadow demon? His mother looked puzzled. What do you mean? Did you have a nightmare? She asked, concerned. Kobe looked confused. You became tired after walking around the museum with us, so your father carried you after you fell asleep, she explained. Kobe still looked confused, but soon felt relief wash over him, and tears began to stream down his face again. His parents looked concerned and couldn't understand why their son was upset, but they comforted him regardless. Eventually, Kobe jumped off his father's back and insisted he walk on his own. All right. But don't go running off, okay? His mother said, still worried. You just woke up. You might trip and fall. Kobe smiled. I know, but you don't need to worry about me anymore. Sometime later, Kobe visited the museum again and tried finding the door to the catacombs, but he had no such luck. He then returned to the painting of the catacombs. This time, all of the caskets were sealed and there were now plants sprouting under a warm light. It looks better than before, he said, smiling. Kobe would never forget about that particular day, and he made sure not to worry anyone ever again. After all, he thought, I can't do anything embarrassing if I'm going to see her again. Though his parents were stunned by his sudden maturity, they continued to love him and protect him all the same, 
and as Kobe grew up, he kept the dragon's words close to his heart, and he eventually became a respectable and mature adult in Erebonia. <laughs>